Broadcasting live at Ron's Pizza on South Main Bell Fountain and at peakofohiotv.com, it's time for Chalk Talk. Here's your host, Tyler Avila. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Chalk Talk here at peakofohiotv.com. I'm Tyler Avila. Got a fun show lined up here for you tonight at Ron's Pizza. We got West Liberty Boys and Girls Track and Field here tonight along with Benjamin Logan Baseball as we get ready to start our spring sports season around the area. And we'll first start off with Ann Vogel and the girls at West Liberty Salem Track uh, team. Ann, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us, Tyler. So last season, you guys had a really great year. We did. We had a solid year. We did. District runner-up. Well, before that, you guys won your 10th consecutive OHC title. Was which it that? I can't remember. <laughs> it, it was. was it I, I made sure I, I went back and did my research. So 10 us. consecutive. District runner-up. You finished 8th as a team at regionals. And then you had a, a couple of girls along with the 4 by 8 team compete at the state level. Yeah. So just kind of run me through just that craziness that we call track and field from 2022. Um. We, we were a younger team um, and had some big shoes to fill, obviously, <laughs> from winning the state team um, title in um, 21, um, and we um, lost um, Emily Holler to a ACL injury. So um, we had, we were, and we, we didn't have a very big team either. I think we were mid-20s. Um, so it was, you know, a lot of the season was spent trying to fill the positions the best we could, and, right. and the girls really bought into, you know, trying new things and trying new events and you know we ended up having a, a four by eight with two girls one who had never even done track before and ended up oh, wow. getting in all ohio and then you know, we had megan adams so so it was a growing year um I, it was a fun year the, the girls what i really enjoyed about them is just their work ethic and and like i said just being willing to try new things because a lot of people don't want to do that you know they get set and i'm a sprinter i'm not gonna you know do anything else so so that was a lot of fun so it was an enjoyable yeah an enjoyable year with maybe a less some stress taken off from you know that having to try to repeat a state title so. right for sure for sure so how many years is it now for you it's uh, well over 20 right 31 Which? this is starting my 31st season I did this last week with Davis Ben Davis the Buffalo he's coach. older than me He's he's uh, approaching, I think, 40 years. I think he said like 35, 30, somewhere yeah. between like 35, 37. I'm like, I bet. oh, my goodness. Yeah. So 31 years as a coach, all with West Liberty, correct? Correct. So just being a part of, of a school and seeing things change throughout now these last three decades, what have you seen change? What stayed the same? And why do you, why you keep going? Um, I'll start with the last question first. Why I keep going is the relationships that, you know, that you form with your athletes and they become good friends, you know, years and you know this, your dad yeah. coach. So, um, you know, just getting those phone calls from an athlete saying, hey, coach, I just got engaged or hey, coach, I found out I was pregnant or hey, coach, I got a new job. Uh, all that stuff, um, you know, keeps me going and, and, and the relationships. But um, now I forgot your other good questions, but but. Um, I, the things that have changed, I think um, we're competing a lot more with um, sports that I would call them year-round sports, like mm -hmm. the club sports that are playing all the time. We used to have those three sport athletes, and they were just, you know, loyal to their school. They played fall, winter, spring sports, and um, now we're kind of competing. You know, we, I have, feel like I have to sell my team more. <laughs> we win state, state titles, and I have to sell my team more. It sounds crazy. And, you um, think that'd be the main seller, right? right? Like, look at all these trophies right here. Right, yeah. I mean, look at the conference championships. Look at, you know, we're the most successful team, you know, in our school history, you know. I, that probably next to cross country. And um, so having to sell that, I, which I didn't have to before. It was just part of what kids did. Um, so, um, you know, compete against those kids that are, you know, trying to specialize in a sport. Um, but a lot is the same. You know, we have good kids. West Liberty's mm -hmm. a great community, um, hardworking kids, kids with great GPAs. You know, I'm not dealing with kids that are ineligible and, and things like that. But um, so that, that stuff's the same. Um, I, I think, too, um, you know, just going through the sport and learning. I, you know, I, I've, I'm a big believer in um, learning more every year. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to do the same. I didn't, I'm not, I'm doing different workouts than I did last year, you know, so, yeah. so I, I think too, the sport has grown and, and there's more access to that kind of information and to, as a coach, you could just learn so much from other coaches around you. So I, before, I don't think there was that access as much. I mean, you go to a clinic and get this little bit, but now right. everything, you know, 
distance workout for a runner coming back from an injury, whatever it is, you know, you can find it and, and, and learn. So what would you say? I'm trying to think because like I'm sure a lot of younger coaches who or, or maybe some of your former athletes who are now coaches, I'm sure they all reach out to you and be like, hey, uh, walk me through this or can you help guide me this way? Where would you say, where are you getting your guidance other than the internet? But like, how are you finding different things? Like you said, you keep your workouts different year sure. in, year out. So where where are you getting that guidance from? Well, I, I go to clinics. I went um, this uh, January, I went to a distance clinic in Boulder, Colorado oh, wow. that Jay Johnson puts on and it was phenomenal. Um, I learned, I'm not afraid to ask other coaches and I actually have mentored, uh, I have three coaches this year in cross country that one was <laughs> Mount Gilead's coach who won a state title and two of the other coaches were uh, district coaches of the year. Wow. So, um, but I actually learned from them as well because they're really willing to try new stuff where I'm just like, well, okay, I'll try. You know, like I, w I want to see a little proof in the pudding. But right. um, so I think learning from the younger coaches as well, you know, and, and, and the athletes that have come out of college should be in the those younger coaches. So I'm just not afraid to ask. And I think that's one, one of the beauty, beautiful things about our sport is that coaches aren't afraid. It's not like, oh, I've got this secret play that I don't want to tell the other team right. and we're, you know, doing the signals. We share it. I mean, I think that that's how we all get better. So I, that's one of the things I love about this sport so much is that coaches are really willing to share share workouts and share what they've you know worked for them and what hasn't worked for them yeah and that's that's kind of why i like the the the, the whole concept of, of running because like when you get into football they're like no this is my playbook i don't want to like it, sure I, I don't want my opponent to know how this play is run because when when they see that formation they're going to be able to know how to stop it so I, I do like that aspect of things when it comes to just running because I mean, anybody and everybody can do it. Sure. And just finding different ways and how you can improve that athlete is very interesting. And speaking of coaching and different things in regards to, um, go away, Siri. Um, different things in regards to just sharing ideas with things. You got a great staff with you. Just combine yes. in regards to the boys and the girls program. So just talk about the staff there at West Liberty Salem. Um, you know, first, um, I, I have to start with Larry Steider, who was the coach when I was in high school. And, and um, he runs our home meets for us. He works with our hurdlers. He was helping some of my athletes today go out of blocks. So so having his knowledge um, is phenomenal. And, and um, you know, he's kind of the father of our program. You know, I don't right. think he wanted to be called grandfather, but no. <laughs> but anyway, but, but you know, he's been there for years. So we have yeah. that. Um, we have um, our boys head boys coach, Aaron Locke, who is a phenomenal coach. And he does such a, we were just talking, um, he does such a great job of developing athletes. He's our middle school cross country coach. And he's, um, I wouldn't have that patience, but he does such a good job of keeping it simple, but letting these kids improve and, and let them see that, you know, if you put in this work, you can get better. And it's not anything magical. It's just, you know, just this simple fun. And he keeps it fun. That's the main thing. So Aaron, Aaron's wife, Mandy Locke, is my assistant coach. And we've been, I don't we always guess how many years. It's been over <laughs> 10 years we've been coaching together. She works with our jumpers, and she's, you know, track and field. Her parents coach track yeah. and field. Her parents are officials now, so she grew up in the sport. Um, Mike Loudon's our distance coach for the boys, um, and he's just, he's a great coach. Whatever he's coaching, whether it be basketball or um, cross country or track, he's just, he's a student of the sport he's in at that time. And then we have a really good middle school staff, Stacy Longshore, um, who um, is a winger who you know grew up with the sport? Um, Johanna, Johanna Smith, and she's married to Josiah Smith, who went to Fountain, who ran for Ben. So there's just uh, this whole and Andy Hoover for him for us. So there, there's just a lot of history there and a lot of different generations. And I'm on that older end now. But um, so it's it's great to have that kind of staff and people you can and count on. And and you know, me and he knows if if I have to miss a practice, rarely. But you know, if she yeah. She knows it. I gave her the workout, and it's all it's all good. So it's great to have that kind of staff, and we have a lot of fun together too. I look like family. No, it's going off of that. It seems like you've had this this staff. I mean, uh, Aaron's been the the boys coach for four years now. This he's entering his fourth season, but it seems like everything everybody's just kind of been there for, for a long time, correct? Right. We have been on, on different levels. You know, Aaron was at the middle school for a while, and um, you know, and I forgot to mention Nate Bracka, our our throws coach, who threw for the Air Force Academy. You know, he's phenomenal. He was a state champion in his own right. So, um, yeah. So yeah, we've all worked in different. I mean, I've been, you know, 
middle school coach while cross country. So we've all worked at different capacities, but it's great to have that kind of family feel. And, yeah. and um, we just work well together. And I think the kids, the kids feed off of that too, just seeing the right. coaching staff get along and, and um, working together to make them the best they can be. So we were talking about last year's team, mid-20s in regards to how many uh, girls you have. How many do you have this year? We have 30, which we're really excited about the numbers. Yep, that's, and it makes it a lot easier. We have our first home meet Monday, and it makes it a lot easier to fill events when you have 30 athletes. It's Even five athletes, it makes a huge difference. So, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So first home meet Monday, who, who are you going up against? Um, Shelby County Schools, Anna, um, Fort Laramie, and Houston. So we're looking forward to that meet. Anna hosted it last year, and, and we're going to host it this year. And um, it's going to be a rust buster for all of us. Um, and, you know, we're coming back from spring break, and we have a meet Monday. So <laughs> we have some girls that haven't actually worked on the relays that much. But um, but it, it'll be fun. And um, I think all the other shoes, our schools are in, this, you know, in the same boat we are. And yeah. So it'll be just good rust buster and against some good competition and some really phenomenal coaches as well. So 30 girls, uh, more flexible in regards to filling different events. What kind of talent does this team have? Um, we're, we have more depth as far as talent. Our, um, maybe what our weakness will be is our youth. Uh, half our team is freshmen, <laughs> so we're really young, but they were good. I mean, they won their OHC conference last year. They were, they were tough, so we've got some um, two freshman pole vaulters coming in that are they're solid. Um, our 4x1 is going to be an all-freshman 4x1 oh, wow. that ran together last year. Um, we've got some kinks to work out, but... Um, you know that that'll be exciting, and we we have some some really talented freshmen coming up. So so our youth will be you know we'll have to work through that, and um, I think just getting through those nerves and and seeing what it's like to compete. You know, I was telling our four by one just in the exchange, I'm like, you gotta get faster, you gotta get faster, and they go, we won every meet except one last year. I'm like, yeah, but you're gonna run against you know girls are just you're gonna be trotting through, and these girls are gonna fly by you. So so I think some of that will come with just experience, oh, yeah. and um, we've got some good meets coming up so that they're going to learn it and it's it's, it's going to be you know there's going to be some failure along the way but um i think that makes you better you know just learning from your mistakes and, and getting better for sure what can they accomplish well you know i think we we can make another run at the conference fairbanks is going to be really tough this year um to beat and you know it's since they split it up into north and south which is dumb um, <laughs> it makes it it really makes it um kind of a 16 meet it's not even that big of a meet so it's like the two of like last year it was our two teams just fighting for points and yeah. um you don't get a lot of help from some of the other schools that are smaller so um i think that'd be good i think district i, I would say ann is the favorite um i'm not sure exactly what's going on with them I mean, you just don't know who stays healthy who stays uh, you know, right. in it, who doesn't burn out. So, um, but I think we can contend for a district title. I think we should be there. Um, regionals are, you know, just always tough with Minster and New Bremen and all those Shelby County schools and Mac schools that come down. So, um, but I think we can hold our own and, and get, you know, our goal is always to get some, some of the athletes to state. And, you know, our four by eight, we lost Megan Adams, but I think we have, I have like probably three girls that maybe we could fill in for her there. So that that's, that's really hopeful, and, and uh, maybe get some other relays there and some some individuals. So, yeah, it'll, it'll be exciting to see what happens and, and how it pans out. But, yeah, a lot of it's out of, you know, I mean, trying to stay healthy is in your control yes. to, to an extent if you're doing the right things, eating right and sleeping. And, um, but, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what goes. But I'm excited. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I'm excited, too. And, and speaking of your athletes, you got two girls here with you tonight. If we can get them to come up. Hey, girls. Elise. So as they're coming up, you can introduce them, Coach. Sure. So speaking of our big freshman class, we have two of our freshmen here. We have Elise Longshore and Bree Scullett. Um, Elise is a pole vaulter, um, sprinter, and um, Bree is uh, kind of a mid-distance distance gal. And they're both in relays. All right. Who wants to go first? <laughs> Brees? Yes. All right, Come I can on. have you take a seat right there. All right. So you ran cross country too, correct? You ran on the, the state team that uh, placed fifth. So I'll, I want to. Were we fourth? Were we fifth? Fourth. 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 We were fourth, yeah. Fourth. Top five state meet. Yep. Um, so talk about what cross country was like and how you're preparing for the start of track on Monday. Um, I think cross country is really fun and I love 
cross country because there's like really team building and like the friendships between the team is like really nice. And for track, I think we're doing really good. And again, we have that close knit team and like. Okay. 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 So, coach said your mid distance. What events will you be doing this year? Um, I'm really hoping to do the 800 and the 4x8 and like the 400. So the 800, 4x8, and the 400. Yeah. All right. So as as a freshman, are you nervous for your first meet coming up? Yes, <laughs> I am pretty nervous, but I think it'll go good. I think it will too. I think you'll be fine. Um, working under uh, Coach Vogel here for someone who's been in the game for so long as she has, what are some things that you've learned from her so far? I've learned that we learn from mistakes and like it's really it's if you if you accidentally mess up, that's something that you can use yep. going on. So it's spring break for you, right? Yes. <laughs> Have you done any fun anything fun this spring break? Um not yet. I mean, we have <laughs> conditioning in the morning, which is really fun to see my friends and stuff. So no, no, nothing uh, nothing too extraordinary outside? No. Well, I mean, it's kind of the, the weather is not all that great yeah. right now. Um, but what would you like to accomplish your freshman year in track? Um, honestly, I just want to get better times. Like, <clears throat> I think if I practice with the faster people in my group, like, I can get better, and I'm really planning on getting faster times All for right. my races. All right. Breeze, thank you so much. Breeze is very modest. She's definitely going to have faster times. Oh, for sure. She crushed a workout yesterday. I was very proud of her. I'm looking forward <laughs> to see how these ladies compete. Miss Longshore, how are you? I'm good. Good. Now... How many longshores are there? Because I see a Claire Longshore from their cross-country team. Are you related to her? Yeah, she's my sister. Sister? So how many sisters or siblings do you have? Um, I have one other younger brother. One other younger brother. Is he going to be a runner, too? Yes. Yes? All right. What grade is he in? He's in seventh. Seventh grade? All right. So I'm sure he probably ran this year, right? Yes. All right. Cool, cool. What are you looking forward to the most in your freshman, right? Yeah. So what are you looking forward to the most your freshman year? Um, probably just learning and getting closer with my teammates. Yeah? What would you like to learn? What would you like to take away um, from your freshman year in track? Um, I'd probably just like to learn more about our workouts and how to become faster and the things that make us better. Okay, okay. So she's a sprinter, correct? And a pole vaulter. And a pole vaulter. Oh, really? Yeah. Pole vault. Interesting. Well, let's talk about sprints first, and we'll talk about your field event, all right? So with your sprints, Gary, why is it so loud? Well, we'll get that fixed. Anyways, so with your sprints, what events would you like to do? Um, the 4x1, the 4x2, and probably a 200. 4x1, 4x2, and the 200. Now, you're part of that all-freshman 4x1 then, correct? Yeah. So ha having that uh, opportunity to be with your teammates that you dominated with last year as an eighth grader, what does that mean to you? Um, I think it's really cool. Yeah? So now in the pole vault inside, were you pole vaulting in, the, in middle school? Yeah. So wh why do you like pole vault? Because I don't know if I'd be able to do that. That seems very, very scary um, to me. I kind of just like the excitement it gives me. Yeah. Why is that? Well, what, what excitement does it give you? Um, I really just like trying to go over high heights, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to shoot for? So that w there was a recent pole vaulter at West Liberty Salem who had a lot of records, and Lydia Mail. Would you like kind of challenge her and, and those yeah. records she set? Yeah. What's it going to take to do that? Um, just consistent practice. For sure. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing how you do. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Ladies, good luck on Monday. Coach, good luck on Monday. Thanks, Tyler. You're welcome, and thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. Coach Vogel, along with Elise Longshore and Brees Gullett, two freshmen on the
West Liberty Girls track team. We'll be back to talk with the boys after this here on Chalk Talk at PeakofOhioTV.com. The weekend should be for relaxing, and that means no cooking. Check out what's hot at Ron's Pizza in Bell Fountain. On top of pizzas, they have subs, sandwiches, salads, and lots of sides like breadsticks, garlic cheese bread, pickle chips, beer-battered onion rings, loaded fries, and more. Check out a specialty pizza this weekend. Ron's Pizza is ready to cook for you. Call 292-7775 or stop by and dine in on South Main Bell Fountain. See more and a menu online at Ron's Pizza's Facebook page. Hello, Benjamin Logan community. I'm Deputy Rick Herring, along with my colleagues, Deputies Matt Robinson and Neil Rhodes. I'm very excited to be a part of the new day here at Benjamin Logan. The three of us have been entrusted with helping keep your children safe, and it's a responsibility we all take seriously. The year is off to a great start, so let's keep it going. Be kind, be safe, and be proud to be a Raider. Benjamin Logan, more than a school, a community. Back here to Chalk Talk, live at peakofohiotv.com, out here at Ron's Pizza. 292-7775 is the number two call for carryout or delivery at Ron's. Here with Aaron Locke. He is the head boys coach at West Liberty Salem for the track team. We just wrapped up with the girls and, and Coach Vogel. What have you learned being around a legend like that uh, there at the with the girls program? Oh, it's been great. Um, I came over as a middle school coach mm -hmm. um, probably about eight years ago just uh, working with cross country and then with track uh, didn't think that I'd get back into varsity coaching and then an opportunity arose and uh, not only moving up to the varsity level but also taking over sprints yeah. so yeah having coach Vogel around to bounce ideas off of uh, has been fantastic um, but in addition to that uh, coach Larry Steider mm -hmm. who has coached probably 40 years and uh, so you can't beat the tradition uh and and the personnel that that is at west liberty um oh for sure and this is year four for you correct as the head man yes all right so throughout those four years maybe what's different oh for you anything that you are changing coaching wise or uh, are you kind of keeping a, a, as the same there for, for the boys well uh, we're still building uh we're still every year you know there are new goals mm -hmm. um the first year was an interesting year because it was COVID. Right. Um, but even going into that situation, you know, we, we wanted to set our sights on a league title. Uh, it had been six years since, uh, since we had one. Uh, so it was nice uh, when we were able to do that. The, the year following is, is we took care of business mm -hmm. uh, and then we followed it up. Um, we're glad that we're down to Division Three. I think that's, uh, <laughs> that's helpful. Uh, but we're we're very uh, thankful for our stint at Division Two. You know, being able to get district a district title there, getting a regional title at Division Two, and and hopefully not having to worry about that again. Uh, but uh, as far as you know, what we're trying to do, um, build uh, pathways to other sports programs. Um, Coach Dan McGill has been great to work with. Um, and, and just really actually I, all the, the coaches there and, and just having good relationships with them, mm -hmm. knowing that, you know, in a school our size, we have to share athletes and we have to work together uh, for the benefit of the kids right. and, and not just, you know, our own interests. Now, to you, I mean, you've, you've been there, you said, eight years now at West Liberty all together, four years now as a head man for the varsity track team. It just seems like there's not a lot of turnover there when it comes to coaching. Everybody's all bought in, and, and they stay for a long time. I mean, heck, Coach Vogel's uh, entering, in, entering her 31st year coaching. What does that mean to be a part of a, a school district that just everybody, they all work well together, and, but they also stay for a long time as well? Uh, you know, it's, it's that tradition uh, it's the level of expectation uh, is, is nice. Uh, so that's something that you now we, we always have to work on. Right. And, and we, we ought not take that for granted. Uh, but for the most part, that's, that's in check. And, and all we have to do is keep reinforcing those things. So I, I like being there. And, you know, I've, I've liked, you know, my years at Bell Fountain for sure. Mm -hmm. but, but I am proud to be a Tiger. Oh, for sure, for sure. Now, one thing that we were talking with Coach Vogel, she said uh, the coaching staff, at least with the track team, it seems like a family. Obviously, you have a family member, your wife, part of the team, uh, helping uh, Coach Vogel with that. So what's it like working uh, with your wife, Mandy, and just uh, having that, uh, that aspect of uh, you guys, no, innocents know where each other are during track season? 
I, I guess the, the best thing, which is not always the best thing, is she tells me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you know anything about my wife, she will tell you the truth. And, and so she keeps me honest in that respect. Um, we try not to talk shop at home. Yeah. Uh, we also have so many other kids to follow as well. We have a baseball player. Mm -hmm. um, we have a youth soccer kids, as, you know, or one youth soccer kid now. And then we were following our daughter in college as well. So that keeps us diverted that we're not track and field all the time. Right. So looking at it, we kind of hit on it. Um, yeah, the OHC title, you guys won it for your second consecutive uh, season last year, 16th overall uh, in program history. Um, had a really great postseason uh, with the districts and winning the regional meets, and you had several athletes compete at track. So just kind of talk about how things uh, played out for you guys in the postseason last year. Uh, it, it was great. It, you know, things at the we, – we took care of business. So we always start the year talking about the conference. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is kind of built along that and, and trying to get there. All right. Uh, so we, we were happy to take care of business there. Um, as a track and field season goes, there's ups and downs. You're dealing with um, weather, you know, and that's the one thing you can't control. <laughs> yeah. um, injuries, sometimes you feel like you can't control those or you're just managing those. Um, and so we had the typical ups and downs of ins and outs with that. Uh, we had the pleasant surprise of having Logan Saylor develop the way that he did and when he did uh, come at the right time. Yeah. Uh, to really give us that huge boost uh, towards the end to kind of propel us, you know, with him s scoring so many points um, in addition to our seniors. Uh, regionals was kind of magical in the sense that everybody took care of business mm -hmm. when when they needed to. And uh, when we started the season last year, you know, Division Two Regional Championship de definitely wasn't on the radar. <laughs> we, not something we'd want to talk about. Right. Uh, so we were happy to have that how that played out. Um, we would have liked to have done a little bit better at the state level, but sometimes you get in that situation, and it's not so much of how you perform, but also how others perform, mm -hmm. and, and we can't beat ourselves up about other people's great performances. Right. Um, I remember because I, I went back and, and I watched our segment from last season. Uh, you guys, uh, you said that you had 30 plus boys on the team. How many guys do you have this year? Uh, we're right about 40 right wow. now. Um, which, you know, we set the record last year and, you know, we're just pleased because I, I think it's, it shows that the program's healthy, that people want to come out and, uh, yeah, we're happy for that. Oh, for sure. So uh, being, being the, the head track coach and having 40 guys at your disposal, how easy does it make in, in regards to filling slots and different events? Cause I mean, with track and field, you have the sprints, the relays, the distance and all the field events to kind of manage and put people here wherever. Yeah, it certainly adds depth, um, but, you know, it, it comes at a price. Uh, right. And so we did have to kind of beef our schedule up to try to get opportunities for the younger guys. Uh, and we want to make sure that they have enough opportunities to compete. And we have to work our butts off to plan practices and, yep. and to keep everybody accommodated and not let kids disappear. So the year one kids want to be year two two kids as well right. yeah but no yep. you're you're exactly right that when we plan meets out and we really want to score points we can look at at having di diversity and, and depth in that what's the potential of the team this year hard to say um i, I like where we are but um you know right now we we, we do it we we account we approach the season like we're supposed to with foundations mm -hmm. routines uh, staying healthy. Uh, we still have the same goal as that we're going to gear everything around winning another conference title. Yep. And hopefully we get, you know, a month into the season, then we can maybe clarify the goals. Uh, we would, you know, we always want to send as many people as we can to regional, as many people to state. And where that ends up is where it ends up. So I know, at least from Coach Vogel, their first meet is Monday. Is that same for you? Yes. So you guys will be going up, going up against uh, Anna, Fort Loramie, and Halston. Um, so how are you preparing uh, everything with the, everybody on spring break this week, gearing up for that first meet come Monday? Uh, we've had really good attendance for spring break. Uh, we've had a few that have been there um, or have been away. Uh, we were working on just two relay teams yep. um, as far as the 4 by one and the 4 by 2 um, the 4x8 and the 4x4, we might have actually an A team and a B team. Oh, wow, the handoffs okay. aren't so crucial in that. Right. 
Um, but the other guys, we're just going to get some times, a lot of uh, 100, 200 times. Um, that will give us the flexibility and the know-how of kind of how to plan in the future. Uh, so we'll work on the little things as far as like, I mean, the little, little things of, you know, getting to your event on time, yeah. warming up properly, cooling down, all these great foundational things that you have to put in in March. And hopefully, and it seems to be that we'll have the weather to do so. Yeah, hopefully. it's uh, It's been nuts, and looking at the weather the rest of the week does not look good. It does <laughs> yeah. not look good. All right, so yeah, uh, let's see. Four guys? Yes. Here, let's uh, get those guys over here. Come on. Come up here, boys. All right, so I know I have three of the four, Dylan Glunt, Owen Harrison, and Micah Smith. Who was the last uh, one? Uh, we had a last-second change. Uh, Dylan Glunt is not here. Okay. Uh, Jackson Steider is. And also Chandler McCaffrey. All right, boys, who wants to go first? All right. I'll have you take a seat right here in the middle, and you get to hold the microphone. And your name is? Owen Harrison. Owen Harrison. All right, Owen, what grade are you in, buddy? I'm a senior this year. Senior. So being a senior, all the years that you've uh, ran track, what are you most looking forward to this year being your final year? The two mile and four by eight. The two and mile. seeing <laughs> what the sprinters do during practice. They're a very interesting bunch. Two mile and a four by eight and watching the sprinters. Why, why, is, why is it interesting watching them? Because they're all pretty interesting guys, like with their personalities <laughs> and some of the stuff they do. Interesting. I think we'll leave it off air. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's probably not uh, uh, appropriate. Um, so the two mile and the four by eight, why the two mile? I mean, uh, being a distance guy, you like that. But for me, it's eight laps around the track. I'm trying to figure out what lap I'm on. So why, why the two mile? So with me, whenever I race, I don't, I'm not really a big fan of getting out stupid fast. <laughs> so doing the two mile, I get plenty of time just to catch up by running consistent laps. And it's just worked better for me, and I like it more in the end. All right. So, yeah. All right. What would you like to hit time-wise in the two-mile? Preferably in the 940s and 930s range. Oh, wow. 940s, 930s. What's it going to take to get there? A lot, of, a lot more endurance. <laughs> a lot, a lot, more, a lot endurance. more endurance. Just <laughs> need to get over this one little bump and need to get over, which is breaking the 950 mark. Because after that, I think it would be pretty good. Because I got 955 last year. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, nine, is that, would that been your fastest time then so far? So far, yes. So far, 9.55. All right, all right. If you had to pick an event that maybe you're not accustomed to doing or something that you would want to try, just just for giggles this year as a senior, for your senior year, what would it be and why? Pole vault. I, I definitely feel like I could do pretty good at that. Really? All right, elaborate a little bit more. So you think you can do good? No? You just ended it there? All right. It's all not right. going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Say by chance, it, 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 it's a possibility. Why? Why pole vault? I just, I've seen some of our pole vaulters, and I feel like I could definitely <laughs> try and one up at least one of them. All right. All right. I'll take your war for it, Owen. Because I, I beat them all in, like, 100-meter dashes and stuff like that. <laughs> So like, okay. I got, I'm a little faster than that, and okay. like how well I've worked my core areas, if I can get to it. Is your hand-eye coordination good, though? Yeah, it's pretty decent. Okay, all right. I just don't want you to, like, hit it and then, like, wipe out. So, all right, all right. Owen, thank you. Good luck yep. this year. Thank you. You're welcome. Who's next? All right, and who, who are you? I am Chandler McCafferty. All right, Chandler, what grade are you in, buddy? I am a senior as well. A senior, all right. Another senior. Are they all seniors, Coach? Uh, we have all one but sophomore. Jackson. And what, what's Jackson? Sophomore. sophomore. All right, so Mike is a senior then too, right? All right, Chandler, what, what events do you run, buddy? Um, 800 mile and two mile. 800 mile and two mile. So you are a distance, mid-distance kid. Kind of, yeah. All right. Why distance? Um, well, I tried out sprinting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pretty slow, so that didn't turn out well. So I kind of went the distance route. Uh, a lot of the guys are great, so I was like, ah, I might as well just stick with this. So, All right, <laughs> interesting, interesting. So how long have you been doing track? Uh, this would be my third year now. Third, third year, so started sophomore year yeah. then. Um, 
So throughout those two years, as you're heading into your senior year, how much of an improvement have you seen on yourself? Uh, I've seen I've seen a lot. I've I'm not only time wise, but as a person myself, I've I've greatly improved. Nice. Of track. Nice. Out of the three events that you told me that you run, which one's your favorite and why? Ooh, probably the mile. Yeah, probably. Why, why so? Um, I like it, it's it's like kind of the perfect middle ground for what I'm capable of. So I feel like it's probably the best in terms of my abilities. Okay. Okay. What time are you shooting for in the mile this year? Um, I'm going for 520s, which isn't that fast, but for me it's fast. So. It's a great goal. It's fast for me, I'll tell you that right now. So 520s, okay. Um, wh why that time? Uh, last year I ran like 534, and I, already, I know for a fact that I can break 530, so I want to get somewhere in those 520s. Lower the better, of course. But. Right. Okay, cool. All right, well, I wish you luck in that, Chandler. Thank you. With the meet coming up Monday, um, what would you like to see out of yourself? What would you like to see, see the team do in the first meet this year? Um, honestly, I just want us to see us all working together, pushing, pushing each other, and just really pushing ourselves and trying to get the best out that we can from each other. All right. Chandler, good luck uh, on Monday and the rest of the season. Thanks for coming out, buddy. Who's next? Micah. All right, Micah. The last senior here. Then we'll talk to Jackson, one of the sophomores. All right, Micah, what what events do you do? Uh, anything they need me to. Anything? Okay. Anything yeah. they need you to. So you're kind of that, that utility role player. Yeah, jack of all trades sort of guy. Okay. Okay. So what would you prefer to run? Uh, four and eight, definitely. Four and eight. All right. All right. Any field events? Uh, maybe shot put. They need me. I did that really? sophomore year. That really? was pretty fun. You had a reaction there, Coach. What was that for? I forgot about that. Yeah, it, it was actually at a different school. <laughs> so I, I forgot that he, he did shop foot and has experience in that. Interesting. All right, all right. So the four and eight, and then you can maybe tag along there in, in the shop put. Okay, okay. So being able to kind of be that utility guy, kind of that jack of all trades, as you said, uh, what does that mean to you, being able to, to help out the team in any means uh, necessary? Uh, it's... You know, it has its positives and negatives. You know, I get a I get a race every meet. Like if there's faster guys, I don't get booted out. I just go somewhere else. Yeah. But it also means I don't get to have that specialized training for everything. So it's not exactly what I would want for some situations. But right. I know it's gonna make me faster in other places too. So there there definitely is a give and take sort of thing. So you guys uh, last year had a really great year, especially in Division Two, mm -hmm. um, going up against some pretty tough competition uh, with uh, the district and then regional meet, and then ha a couple of guys competing there at the state level. So drop it down to D3 and having that experience in D2, how's it going to help you this year? Uh, it's definitely going to give us an edge. You know, that tougher competition, you know, having them push us more, I think it's just, it's already stuck in our heads. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to be able to be able to blow by everyone else in races. Coach said there's around 40 guys on the team this yeah. year. That's huge. That's huge for a track team for boys. So having that big number, what does that mean to you? Uh, it definitely means that people care about it. Oh, for sure. For me, it's actually not that big. I still think it's small. <laughs> I came, I came from a really big school. I think there's 150 on the team there right now this year. Wow. Um, obviously, they're not all as fast as everyone is here. So it's definitely quantity over quality, but. I, I definitely think that they care about it a lot more, and they take it seriously. What school is that? Uh, oh, it's in a different state, Virginia. Different state. Okay, so. okay, okay, okay. Makes sense, makes sense. What would you like to accomplish this year? Um, Race-wise, I want to go about 50, 51 in the four. You know, that's just that threshold area for that elite level running. Mm -hmm. um, any other races, just run out as ever fast as I need to, you know, get the gold. Okay, all right. Mike, thank you and good luck this season. Thank you. You're welcome. Last but not least, Jackson's, uh, Jackson Steider, sophomore. Jackson, how are you, buddy? Not too bad. So being a sophomore on this team and having a lot of upperclassmen, especially with these three seniors that you're joined along with, what have you learned uh, so far? Um, really learned how to push myself, and especially just coming from, like, Expect, yeah, the seniors just really teaching me how to run and just a lot of encouragement's been awesome. So what was freshman year track like for you? Um, it was pretty good. I went, I made it to regionals, which was pretty nice for a freshman. And then 
just being up there with all like the seniors and juniors yeah which is kind of fun just being pushed by the older guys but i enjoyed it what events did you buddy i did the 110 hurdles uh the 300 hurdles and then long jump and then this year i'll also be in the four by one you're busy yeah so what about the hurdles because if i tried that i'd trip eat crap and just i'd quit so why the hurdles what what intrigues you about them um well my dad did them when he was a kid okay and then my grandpa is also the coach so just kind of the genes and <laughs> i've just been good at them makes sense okay what's it like having your grandpa as a coach uh brutally honest uh but i like it um does he push you? Yeah, which I enjoy that because he's not like, I'm not a favorite. Like, I'm equal to everybody else, mm -hmm. which is nice. And it's just nice to know, like, they're being honest with you. And Okay. So what would you like to accomplish this year as a sophomore? Um, With D3, I'm really looking at going to state for the 110s. Okay. And for the 4x1, I think we have a shot of going. What's it going to take to get there? Um, for the 110s, I need to run low, low to mid 15s. Oh, wow. Which I'm at, my PR from last year is mid 16s, so I think it's completely doable. Okay. And then for the 4x1? We got a bunch of fast guys coming out, and I think personally there's a 100% shot that we could. Like, they're just all great guys and fast. Heck yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to be really looking forward to seeing how the season develops with you guys because it's always interesting to watch how the Tigers, all the success that you guys have throughout the years. Guys, thanks for coming out tonight. I greatly appreciate it, and good luck this season. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Coach Locke, along with Owen Harrison, Jackson Sider, Micah Smith, and Chandler McCaffrey from the West Liberty Salem Boys track team. We'll take a quick pause and wrap up the show talking some baseball with Benjamin Logan and their new head coach, Jeremy Allen. That is next here on Chalk Talk Live at peakofohiotv.com. The weekend should be for relaxing, and that means no cooking. Check out what's hot at Ron's Pizza in Bell Fountain. On top of pizzas, they have subs, sandwiches, salads, and lots of sides like breadsticks, garlic cheese bread, pickle chips, beer-battered onion rings, loaded fries, and more. Check out a specialty pizza this weekend. Ron's Pizza is ready to cook for you. Call 292-7775 or stop by and dine in on South Main Bell Fountain. See more and a menu online at Ron's Pizza's Facebook page. Hello, Benjamin Logan community. I'm Deputy Rick Herring. Along with my colleagues, Deputies Matt Robinson and Neil Rhodes, I'm very excited to be a part of the new day here at Benjamin Logan. The three of us have been entrusted with helping keep your children safe, and it's a responsibility we all take seriously. The year is off to a great start, so let's keep it going. Be kind, be safe, and be proud to be a Raider. Benjamin Logan. School of Community. Have the boys take the microphone. Back here to Chalk Chalk one final time here at peakofohiotv.com. All the way, there we go. Wrapping up talking some baseball with Jeremy Allen. He is the new head coach, the new varsity coach there at Benjamin Logan. So you are hired in back in February. What, what led to everything in regards to you and essentially taking over? So uh, once we found out Coach Wilson was, was resigning, um, like it was a no-brainer for me to put, in, to put him for that spot, just because I've been around the program for the last six years. So yeah. it, was, uh, it was a pretty easy decision. You have over 25 years coaching experience being an assistant there at Ben Logan, whether that be basketball, football, baseball, from junior high to high school. Um, is this your first, in a sense, varsity level, like head coach? or So um, I coached uh, Riverside Girls for – Three years, um, from like 09 to 12, I think it was, something like that. Uh, so I coached them for the varsity team, and, but, but other than that, this will be my first yeah, varsity um, head coach for baseball or anything like that. How excited are you? I'm pretty excited. Like, this is a great group of boys. Uh, they work hard, they do, that, do things right. So, yeah, I'm really excited about it. What can this team accomplish? You know, they can accomplish whatever they want. Uh, they, they do the right thing all the time. Um, even we were outside today. It was cold, it was wet, <laughs> um, but they still came in and did, uh, they 
they did what they were supposed to do correctly all the time. That, yeah. That's just as who this group of kids is. Looking at it, last year the Raiders went 16 and 4, 13 and 3 in the CBC. It's kind of been been Logan dominance in the conference the last couple years. Why is that? We've had some really good pitching over the last six years since we since we've been doing this. Um, that's what's led us. Now we've you know we obviously we've had guys that've been able to hit the ball, timely hits and things like that. But pitching has really dominated um, what we've done in, in the uh, last last five, six years. Looking at it, you had four seniors graduate last year. Uh, Caden Arn, Austin McGowan, uh, Breshen Jacobs, and Braden Wilson. Now, Arn, McGowan, and Jacobs were all pitchers, too. Were. So you lost three quality starting pitchers there. How, how are you... How are you going to replace those guys uh, with the team you have this year? Well, honestly, like you can't replace kids like Caden Arn or, or Austin McGowan. You just can't replace those kids. Uh, we've got a group of, of kids that come out. They throw a lot of strikes. Uh, they're able to mix up their speeds really well. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're going to pitch the contact. Um, I think defensively behind them is where we're going to be successful as long as we can pitch the contact. Um, and make those plays behind him will be will be just fine. Speaking of contact, uh, looking at the stats last year, EJ Martin led the league in batting average at a, a 55. Yeah, so uh, was, the, the stats are a little skewed, but EJ, <laughs> um, he, he was limited in the bats because he got injured. Okay. Uh, but he was off to a, a really good start. And, and we expect the same thing this year. Like, we have, we have guys that, that are going to have to step up offensively. Um, EJ is also going to have to step up um, on, on the mound as well for us. So for you, Coach, is anything going to be changed in, in regards to like just coaching style compared to what these kids are used to? Like, or are you going to kind of try to keep it the same? Like, how, how are you approaching this year? So I've coached the senior group for a lot of years. I coached them in summer and, and things like that. So they know me. Um, but my style is really similar to what, to what Coach Wilson was doing. Um, we, he and I believed in the same things. We like small ball. We like to do things the right way. Uh, so that stuff's not going to change. Uh, just the just the uh, the message and just the person dealing with that message message is what's changing. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to pull up the schedule. So you guys are supposed to play Saturday, depending Correct. on how the weather is. Yeah. Uh, I got a tough matchup in cold water. Um, so if things go uh, the way that uh, it should, hopefully, and you guys do get to get out in the diamond, um, what are you looking for in in these guys in the first game? Uh, it's trying to get those pitchers, uh, get some jitters out of their way. You know, um, we, we face cold water Sunday or Saturday, and then we go to, then we have Wapak and then Kent Ridge. So those three teams, uh, preseason wise are all ranked in the top 10 in the state. Oh, wow. Uh, they're, they're really good baseball teams. So we just want to go out and, and, and show what we can do. Uh, I think we're going to get, I think we're going to surprise some folks that, uh, probably don't believe in what we're going to do, uh, cause we lost some pitching. But I like I like what our kids are doing, and and that's gonna that's gonna show once we get on the on the field. I'm gonna try to pull up um, the press release that was released when mm -hmm. they announced you were hired because I saw something in there that I really liked from uh, Bo Harmon, your guys' athletic director. He says, uh, Coach Allen desires to take the baseball program to a new level of success. He is completely bought in. And he lo uh, and the love and passion for Benjamin Logan Athletics shown by Coach Allen and his family are deeply appreciated. We look forward to what Coach Allen brings to the future of Raider baseball. So just hearing that uh, from your athletic director, your activities director, whatever you want to call him, just what does that mean to you as you take this next step um, in your career and in your life? You know, it's it, it's awesome to have that backing. Um, you know, Mr. Harmon obviously was a Benjamin Logan grad, um, as a, as am I. So I've like I went to Ben Logan my whole life, brought my kids back home to so they could go to Ben Logan. Um, but to have that support from the get go is, is really huge. It allows you to kind of relax and get, and get into what you want to do mm -hmm. um, without worrying about all the other nonsense. Speaking of your kids, your uh, son Cam is playing this year. So what's it like uh, being able to coach your son? Because um, I'm sure you've done it all throughout right. his, th throughout his uh, his life, but just now at the high school level, well, what's it like being able to, to be a part of that? You know, it's it, it's pretty neat. Um, however, there's there's also some challenges, right? Uh, you're like I'm always harder on my kids than I am anybody else's. Yeah. Um, the good thing is my my assistant coaches usually handle Cameron, so I don't <laughs> have to deal with it. Um, that's just kind of how we set it up, so I so dad doesn't get in the way. Right. Right. Because that's what you don't want to do. 
Um, so we kind of handle it that way. Uh, but, but it is fun to go home and, and have those experiences uh, as a family well. So uh, has any talks uh, came about in, in regards to just uh, – Dad, I mean, you got to lay off right now or, or like uh, anything like that? Or what, do you think that may come out uh, as the season progresses? I don't think it will. Um, Cameron, <laughs> Cameron's a pretty, pretty hard-nosed kid. Um, he likes to be pushed, um, and you can get on him pretty, you can get on, on him pretty good, and he's going to take it the right way. Um, so I, I, don't I don't see it coming, but um, it's never happened in the past, but, you, you know. He's also 18, 18 year old kid. You never know. That is true. That is true. You never know with uh, with those high school kids. Speaking of it, we got four of your players here: and Trey Miracle, Cam Allen, Preston uh, Bothell, and Ian Scheider. So, if you want to talk about these guys and what they're going to bring to the uh, to the team this year. Sure. So Trey's going to be our catcher. Um, he uh, to me, he's the best catcher in the league, and it's not that close. Um, he's he's the leader of this team. He makes us go. Um, He's just uh, he's just one of those kids who just takes takes charge of it and, and really excels at that. Mm -hmm. um, Preston's our other guy who's going to be the, uh, he's going to play second base for us. Um, he's the the vocal guy on the on the field. He he calls all of our bunt coverages and things like that, uh, and has really uh, he he keeps these guys going. That's just who he is. I love him. Um, Ian's going to play in center field. He's going to be the leader of the outfield group, and. Uh, Ian's just a solid kid. Like, everything he does is, is right. Um, even on a bad day, Ian's always right. Um, so you don't have to worry about those things like that, which is, you know, that's the kid you need in center field. Cam's going to play shortstop for me. Um, maybe pitch a little bit, we'll see. Uh, but he's just, he's got the experience. He's played shortstop last year. He got a little bit of experience as a sophomore. Um, he's going to be our leadoff guy and, and, uh, and lead us offensively that way. All right. Who wants to go first? All right, Cam. Here you go, buddy. So it's senior year for you. Yeah. <laughs> and then when the news came out that your dad um, was it was going to be hired in, and uh, when everything happened, what was going through your mind? I was like, yeah, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> he, he's a, I'm like, wow, I got to deal with this jerk for a couple more, <laughs> couple more uh, months, but it's all right. So, do you think anything's uh, any shop talk in regards to like baseball? Is that going to continue at the house? Like after a game, maybe something doesn't go well. Like maybe you're the root of the problem. Like how, how are you going to handle that at home once everything's all said and done? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, having your dad as a coach throughout your years growing up, and now it's your senior year, being able to share that experience with him. What does that mean to you? It means a lot. Uh, he's been around for all of us basically since coach pitch and, mm -hmm. and now uh, farm league and all that. So it's, it's cool to have him around. So I was talking with him in regards to uh, what uh, your previous coach was. He's got, he said he's going to keep a lot of things the same. He kind of had the same, uh, same ideas and aspects from what your previous coach had. So just knowing the fact that nothing's really going to change, like, what does that mean to you just knowing that things are, are going to stay the same in regards uh, to – um, how they were the last three years. It's it's comfortable to know that not a lot's going to change because it's 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 pretty basic and simple for us. Mm -hmm. You guys have been dominating the CBC the last couple years. Uh, most of it was based on pitching, but you lost some pretty stellar pitchers last year. So, how are you guys going to stay on top of the CBC throughout this season? We uh, we have some, we have some good guys. Um, you know, we have the best catcher, uh, a lot of seniors, a lot of seniors, uh, it's going to push us through. In your eyes as a player, what's the potential of this team? We're going to go far. Go far? Yep. You're just going to leave go it at far. that? All right. Yep. All right. All right. What would you like to accomplish this year? I want to win a sectional title. Sectional title? Yeah. When was the last time, Coach, that's happened? Was it a one? I, I don't. I don't. Without looking, I'm not sure. To I be think honest. 2001. <clears throat> wow. So about yeah. 22 years. Yeah, we we yeah. we've made it to sectional title games, and we uh, we've lost to uh, some Cincinnati teams in the last couple of years. So yeah. it's kind of we're going to get over that hump. What's it going to take to do that? Uh, we're gonna we got we got to keep keep us together. <laughs> you know, not not uh, lose our minds over each other, and which we which we can do. 
We're, we're a pretty tight group. Playing shortstop, uh, coach said that you're going to maybe pitch a little bit. Um, for pitching, what would you like to, to see happen with you out in the mound? Throw strikes. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Um, when was the last time you pitched? I pitched a little bit last year. Not a lot because, you know, we had those really, really good pitchers last year. But, yeah. So with all the underclassmen, because obviously you're a senior and the other three flanking you are seniors as well, what are you trying to teach those young guys for once you guys are gone and they continue on with this program? What would you like them to learn? How to do it the right way. Okay. You know, we have, you know, seven seniors, and a lot of spots next year will be filled by those young guys. So uh, try, try to teach them up and try to make it simple. Okay. All right. Cam, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Who wants to go next? All right. And I'm joined along now with... All right, Ian. So, Coach said you're going to be playing center field, and you're the leader of the outfield group. So, just knowing that, um, what would you like to see accomplished w with your guys in the outfield? I just don't want to see many balls get down this year. Um, we've had a pretty good outfield in the past. Last year, we were pretty good. We're returning all three of our guys out oh, nice. there, and you know, it's just really fun to be out there, have all the all the grass, a lot of action. This year, when, when you lose two really good pitchers, we didn't see. A ton of balls last year, but we're going to see a lot this year, so it'll be a lot of fun. So, how do you how do you stay active? How do you stay motivated out in the outfield, especially like last year when you had a lot of great pitching? You didn't didn't see a lot of uh, fly balls out uh, out there. So, how do you stay like? Oh, come on, <laughs> anything coming my way? Like, how do you stay mentally ready? Well, for me, I've always like wanted the ball whenever possible. Like any sport, basketball, I want the ball. Football, I want the ball. Baseball, you always gotta have that mindset where I hope this ball comes to me. And it's fun in the outfield because you can make some highlight plays. Sometimes you have the chance to double runners up, throw somebody out. So it's, I mean, it's it's not that hard to stay focused out there. You just gotta stay in the game. What would you like to accomplish this year? Uh, this year, I want to win a district title. District, okay. So we're moving up from sectional. So I, I, sh I think last year we lost in the district title. Okay. So, okay. Is it district then sectional? How does that work? So it's sectional, sectional then district. Then district. Sectional then yeah. district. Okay. 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 And that district game last year was really tough, going down there three separate days, so like whole momentum shift, and it was. I do remember that you guys yeah. were you were playing pretty well. Then it was like a rainout or something. Yeah, a couple rainouts. We went down there one day and didn't even oh. throw a pitch. So. I'm sure all like the, there's no way you can keep that momentum the next day. So yeah, I, oh, that's rough. That is mm. definitely rough. Um, so being in the outfield, playing center field, is there any infield position you'd like to play? No, uh, <laughs> I'm good in the outfield. I used to play first base, but that was probably about 10 years ago now. So I think I think I'm fine just staying out in the outfield. Okay, okay. Is there any? Um, maybe pro player, uh, center fielder that you kind of would like to model your game after or that you kind of like look up to? Uh, I really like uh, Mike Trout's game. He's a consistent vocal guy in the outfield. He's always consistent at the plate, has a great approach. I mean, even though Shohei Otani struck him out the other night, he's he still did. regarded as one of the best. So That he did. That, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure uh, Trout will not be able to live that down this year with mm -hmm. uh, Shohei uh, this season. Um, that's a, that's, a, man, that's a great player to kind of to model after uh, there, Mike Trout. What are you trying to teach these younger guys? I just want these younger guys to understand the role that you have as an upperclassman within a program. Um, we haven't like always had the greatest um, example as like underclassmen, but if you can really like continue the culture that we built here, we have a great tradition. I mean, CBC titles every single season. You just have to like instill the work ethic in those younger guys to just keep it going and like have something to play for because sometimes we got some guys lack like the motivation out there but you always got to be motivated that's a great answer ian that is really a really great answer thanks for coming out buddy and good Thank luck you. this season you're Thank welcome you. all right who's next trey you gotta go last man yeah saving the the best that's for last it. right that's right <laughs> <laughs> all right preston how are you good how are you i'm doing all right so second baseman vocal player out there on the infield so just What's it take to be that vocal leader? You, you can't really let any, everything around you get to your head. You got to be staying focused at all times, and you got to know what everyone else on the field's doing. 
So how, for you, I mean, playing second and trying to make sure you know what everybody's doing, how long did it take for you to kind of grasp that and learn that? Uh, growing up, I was always second, and I just loving baseball my whole life. I know what everyone else has to do. And then last year, I didn't really get to play much, so I get to see, I was able to see a lot of the field mm -hmm. and where everyone else needs to be out there. So being a, being a senior this year, getting ready to start um, second base and start the season coming up Saturday, hopefully, hopefully with that with, with the weather. Um, what are you looking forward to the most in playing a, a tough game with cold water? I mean, iron sharpens iron. I mean, you get to see the best pitches we'll probably see all year for these next three games. And if we're able to jump on these guys, I feel like we'll be confident enough to jump on anyone. Oh, for sure, for sure. So kind of going off of that, what can this team accomplish? Because you guys have accomplished a lot uh, throughout these last several seasons. I mean, it's expected for us to go out and get CBC title. So our, we're trying to make as deep as run as we can. Okay. Put a little history in the books. Definitely go out with a bang senior, yeah. senior year, right? So when the coaching change was announced, what was your thought in having Coach Allen to step up and be the, the, the oh, head man? Oh, I was so happy. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I had Coach Allen a lot growing up as a coach. I played with Cam, and I, it was just so happy for me to come, for him to come back. So other than baseball, what other sports do you do? Football. Football. All right. So you were on the coaching staff too, right? I did. So being able to have him uh, as, as a football assistant coach, mm -hmm. now as the, the head baseball coach, what's what's his coaching style like? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think coach wants to hear this. You can take the headset off. You're good. Oh, he ain't. He, you don't. You don't want to mess up with <laughs> Coach Allen. He'll let you know, but he ain't gonna be rude about it. He's gonna help you out. All right, Preston. Good luck this year. Right, Thanks thank for coming you. out. You're welcome. Last but not least, the best catcher in the CBC, according to no Coach pressure, Allen, buddy. Trey Miracle. <clears throat> Trey, how are you? Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing all right. So what does it take to be the best catcher in the league? I think it just comes down to fundamentals, like looking up to guys like J.C. Rio Muso and Mitch Garver of the Texas Rangers. Those are guys that I just really like uh, watching day in and day out, falling asleep at night, Interesting. watching what they do. So what what have what have you taken from from those pro guys and uh, used in your game? Uh, I think most importantly, making the pitchers look good. That's what I've tried to be able to do the last two or three years, catching like Blake and uh, Carter a couple of years ago, and then Austin and Cade last year, Just make the guys look good, and then I look good. So that is true. That is true. Um, so throughout these last three years, and, and we can include this year too, who has been the, the the, the strongest thrower that you've caught so far? Oof. Which Oof. one is like you catch it and you're like, I might get some texts Ow. after this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'd say probably Carter. Really? Yeah. I don't know. They're all pretty up there. <laughs> Austin's splitter, Cade's curve and change, Blake's sweeping curve. Oh, I don't know. It's a whole repertoire of what I've touched, so I like it all. Makes sense. Makes sense. So why did you want to be a catcher? Um, dad stuck me there behind the plate in <laughs> T-ball. So I've been there all the way through travel ball, all the way up through high school. Makes sense. Okay. Senior this year, what can this team accomplish? I think we just keep doing what we've been doing, get back to that district title game and take it over again. Hopefully Moving no up, rain outs, right? Yeah. <laughs> Moving up to D2 might be tougher this year, but I think we can get back at it. So you guys were D3 then last year, now Correct. D2 this year. Um, knowing that, how, how does that excite you, being able to play that tougher competition? Better Cincinnati teams. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Down goes the, the giant, right? Yep. All right, all right. Um, so we talked about those pro guys you look, you look up to and kind of model, model your game after. Um, is there anybody in regards to underclassmen who you're kind of helping out along the way to replace you behind the plate come next year? Uh, we have a couple sophomores that I've been working with this year and this past year. And then Nolan Roos, who caught a couple years ago uh, on that good team with Blake and Carter. He's been coming back and coaching, so I think that really helps them out too. Nice, nice. All right, Trey, guys, I know we're a little past the time here, but I thank you guys for coming out tonight. Greatly appreciate it. Good luck yep. on Saturday. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome.
Benjamin yeah. Logan Baseball here with our new head coach, Jeremy Allen, along with four seniors, Trey, Cam, Preston, and Ian, here on Chalk Talk. That'll do it for us here tonight. We'll be back next week here on Chalk Talk live at peakofohiotv.com. Want to give a shout out to Rons for hosting us tonight. Want to give a shout out to Gary for producing and being the cameraman. Shout out to Lou for letting me host the show. And for you and all of our guests out tonight as well, thanks for watching. And we'll catch you next week here on Chalk Talk at peakofohiotv.com. The weekend should be for relaxing, and that means no cooking. Check out what's hot at Ron's Pizza in Bell Fountain. On top of pizzas, they have subs, sandwiches, salads, and lots of sides like breadsticks, garlic cheese bread, pickle chips, beer-battered onion rings, loaded fries, and more. Check out a specialty pizza this weekend. Ron's Pizza is ready to cook for you. Call 292-7775 or stop by and dine in on South Main Bell Fountain. See more and a menu online at Ron's Pizza's Facebook page.